Glory to God. God deserves glory. Am I right? I was thinking last night, like, what should I to do a sermon on? I had some time to think about it. And I started thinking to myself that there is nothing that we will ever do. Nothing. Not one thing that God has, that will compare to what God has already done for us. Let's take a moment to process this. There's nothing. Not one thing. How powerful is this statement? It's kind of mind-shattering for me because no matter what we do, we will never come close in comparison to the grace we have already received through Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of our sins. Keeping this in mind, we should realize that through this sacrifice, all God asks us for is our time and praise or our sacrifice. Our time and praise? That's it? Christ sacrifices life for sinners and all he asks is our own sacrifice, our devotion to him, in other words. I want to open up to Romans 12.1, where Shaka got us started today. This is the words of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was in many ways, he was human like us. And these are his words to the brethren. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says this. This is not Jesus saying this. This is Apostle Paul because he understands. He understands that Jesus came for our sins and he's urging the brethren to say, do everything that is acceptable and holy unto God because it is your reasonable service. Amen. That, these are some strong words and I like the way Shekha got us started because it gets us into the topic of sacrifice. What is holy and acceptable? Um, I'm going to recap Sam's words. In Leviticus, he says, what is sacrifice? He describes what is sacrifice in Leviticus 1-2. He says that doves and pigeons, grains, herd, the best sacrifices were offered to God. And this was a system set up to God to cleanse people of sin. But then he says in Isaiah 66 too, it says that people constantly abused this. They just felt that they could sacrifice something and their sins would be cleansed. They constantly abused this to they used it as an excuse to sin and then as Sam said in Isaiah 53 then he sent his only son as the ultimate sacrifice this is a prophecy from Isaiah that says Jesus will come and he will cleanse our sins and then Alex I like the way he uh, brought up the topic on that everyone everyone has something that they could give for God not just one person or another everyone has talents that they could used to multiply, in, in which the example of the multiplying of bread and the fish, he fed thousands, and that's the same thing with us. All 12 of his disciples, they, were le- they all got baskets. They were all in charge of getting a basket. And it's an example for us that through this, we could all have a part in the multiplying of Jesus' word. When we sacrifice, when we spend our time in devotion, we could have our stuff multiplied unto God unto the kingdom of heaven. And then Vlad said in Hebrews 10, he brought up the example of being sanctified by the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Romans 12, 2, he then said, in order to have this sanctification, we should be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Amen. These are some strong words. And I had uh, kind of my own topic on this. Um, I want to read from John 11, if you guys bear with me. I'm sure most of you guys know the story of Lazarus, but I'm going to read it to you. Chapter 11, verse 1, John. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. I love this verse because he already knows what's going to happen. He knows that there's a reason for this sickness. is because God will be glorified. The Son of God will be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard that therefore he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after he said to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. Okay, so the next verses talk about how they're making their journey to Judea in order to visit um, Lazarus. So verse 20, we're going to fast forward. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. 
Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother hath not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in this resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whatever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Son of God, the Son of Christ, the Son of God, which should come into this world. And when she had said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard this, she arose quickly and came unto him. So right now, background information, Jesus is talking to Martha, and he's saying that I am the resurrection and the life. Um, no one knows at this time period that Jesus is going to get resurrected. Um, it's foreshadowed in other events, and it's kind of leading up to it, but people are kind of guessing what's going to happen. So he says these words to Martha, and these are one of the first words that we see that foreshadowing that Jesus is about to be resurrected and died. And uh, Jesus knows this also. So then he, Martha calls Mary to see Jesus. Mary is a central character in this uh, setting. If you guys focus on Mary right now. And then keep in mind Mary until the end, please. Verse 32. Then when Mary was come here, Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother hath not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. These are some powerful words. Jesus wept. There's two words, and there's so much can come from this. He, the emotion that went into it, Jesus has the same emotion as us. He, he was grieved. And then verse 39 Go for going down. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath done, been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe that thou, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where he, the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Lord, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because, but because the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And that he who was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about the napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen which things Jesus did believed on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus brought the dead, the dead to life. And this is this story that I just read to you guys might be wondering, like, how do, what does this have to do with sacrifice? But if you guys bear with me till the end, you guys will hopefully get a clearer picture. Let's all turn to Mark 14. Verse 1. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by the craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of the Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman in an alabaster bite of oatment of spikenard, very precious, and she break the bread and poured it on his head. First, I want to look at the first couple uh, lines of the verse in Mark, Mark 3. And it says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, we, we don't know much about Simon the leper, but he was Simon the leper. He is no longer Simon the leper because Jesus cleansed him. Hallelujah. And now we see these, this word that says he is in the house. Simon the leper welcomes them in, their, in his house, his holy house, because he knows what Jesus has done for him. Jesus is precious to him, and, he, and we could see it because we are at his house. And then it says, a woman having an 
alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there some had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this a waste of ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence, and I have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. 300 pence? In um, Matthew, you guys might not know how much 300 pence is, but in Matthew or Luke, if you guys study this story in the other um, Gospels, we could see that 300 pence is a lot of a whole year's wages, a whole year's wages. And you might, we might be wondering right now, why would this woman, out of anything, why would she sacrifice a whole year's wages? For what purpose? I mean, yeah, sure, Jesus was, um, he did many healings, but she sacrificed, in that moment, she sacrificed a whole year's wages. And then we'll continue reading. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hot wrought a good work unto me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whenever ye will may do good with, but may, me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. To this day, 2,000 years later, we're talking about this woman. And there's a reason why this was included in the gospel. This sacrifice that she made makes you, makes me, made me wonder, why did she make this sacrifice? What was her background? Why? I mean, it's, it's a big sacrifice, and right now, once we, we might be sacrificing our church or giving something, we, we might think about, like, this is too many zeros, or we might have, like, like, doubts in my mind like eh, this, uh, you know but this woman gave up her year's wages in that spot and we are left wondering why what kind of woman was she let's all turn to John 12 verse 1 then Jesus, six days before the pa Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was which had been dead, and whom he raised from the dead. There they made him supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. This woman was Mary. Makes sense now, huh? The Mary that got down on her knees and begged Jesus, why did you take Lazarus away from me? The same Mary that Jesus brought the life of her brother back to life. That same Mary is the Mary that gave up her year's wages because she was glorifying God. And she knew that he deserved the sacrifice. And it kind of correlates back to life. Jesus gave his life for us. He gave his life for us. And sometimes we may have doubts on what sacrifice we may give, but just like Brother Alex said, sometimes we are forgetful of what God has done for us. I know there are moments in my life where God has done many miracles to me, and it's, it's glory to God that I'm here speaking today. And sometimes I may forget. Sometimes I might not give glory to God that he deserves or I might not give the sacrifice that he deserves. But God deserves the best, just as Apostle Paul urges in 12.1, I beseech you, brethren, to give your bodies a holy and acceptable sacrifice to God. Slava Bohu. Psalms, to finish off, I want to read from Psalms 27. Slava Bohu means glory to God, by the way. Um, Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This is the words of David. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. 
One thing I have desired of the Lord that will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, ye, I will sing praises unto the God. Hallelujah. Slava Bohu. Amen.